People are always asking me where I get the inspiration for my inventions and it can be the tiniest little thing that sends me on a tangent to be like, that is the next thing I want to build and there's no if, ands, or buts about it. It might be something I hear on a podcast, it could be just a random meme I see on the internet or just like in the real world watching people do things and I'm like, that is an invention idea and I need to build it. And that's exactly why I turned on this camera right now because I came across this photo on the internet of the most adorable tiny little 3D printer and and I'm thinking I need that in my life right now. And clearly I'm more of a buy a 3D printer, take it out of the box and plug it in kind of guy. So I'm going out of my comfort zone. Have I ever built a 3D printer? No. Do I believe in myself? Mostly. And, <laughs> and you know, that's, that's good enough for me. So let's go ahead and try and 3D print ourselves a 3D printer. So the first order of business was gonna be tracking down exactly where this 3D printer came from and if I can actually 3D print it myself. So I started out by going back to the original tweet where I found the printer and everything was in Japanese so I translated the post to English to get all the details. It looks like the name of the printer is the Fraxinus 00TW, if I'm saying that correctly, and the designer of the project looks to be someone named Summer Orange. And by looking at the tweet below it, my top level CIA detective skills were confirmed and I'd have to agree it is so cute. I don't think the author of this tweet is Summer Orange so I decided to go to his profile and it does look like he's a design engineer in Tokyo doing DIY stuff in the 3D printer space. So I checked out the link in his bio and he had a link to the Frax in his project. Again everything was in Japanese here but luckily I was able to translate the entire website over to English so I could figure this out. It looks like there's a whole bunch of different styles that you can make, but I was only interested in the tiny itty bitty Fraxinus 00W. Luckily they had a link to their Discord on the website as well, and I'm hoping this is gonna be the last missing piece to figure out how I was gonna build this thing. The only issue is yet again, everything was in Japanese. I'm just hoping that the language difference isn't too much of an issue down the road, whether it's the instructions on how to actually build this thing or all the different electronics that I'm gonna need to purchase. Hopefully they're not too difficult to actually source for this build. However, I was able to find Summer Orange inside the Discord server, so I'm gonna send them a message. I would love to build the Fraxinus 00TW. Do you have a link? to the files slash assembly. And now we wait. And luckily I didn't actually have to wait that long at all because the next day when I got to the studio, I had a message from Summer Orange with a link on how to become a beta tester. And once I became a beta tester, I got access to their Google Drive. It gave me access to all the different styles of the printer, but of course I was just interested in our tiny little one. And even there, there was multiple different versions of this tiny little printer that I could make. But luckily we could go deeper and get just the 00TW. We had the CAD files here, the printed parts, the whole build of materials and the instruction manual. It was pretty detailed and mostly in English, which I liked. I was just a little bit nervous at the end when it said that not all of the details were here. I hadn't written too many details on how to adjust and process. For the hard stuff, go to the community. Happy toasting. So I think the question that I actually need to ask myself isn't can I 3D print a 3D printer? It's gonna be more along the lines of can I 3D print a working 3D printer? Because clearly I have all of the resources I need, it's just like am I gonna be able to connect the dots and make this all work? Because the file of the parts that I got access to is so detailed. I mean just look at this, we have the entire 3D printed 3D printer, every single little part that we're gonna need to actually bring this to life. Everything is super well organized here on the side, so hopefully that should give us a leg up because there is one one thing that kind of gives us a leg down. And it was something that I was already anticipating and that was the build of materials for all the other parts that I was gonna need to buy. For one thing, everything was in Japanese so I was gonna have to translate all the different parts to figure out what they were, but most of the links to find them were also not found in the US. So over the next week or so, it was pretty much just a back and forth process of taking each individual part and translating it so I knew exactly what I was looking for and then finding a comparable website to find that part and order it. As the part slowly started flowing in, I got a little bit confusing because I just had all of these random components showing up and I wasn't really sure which part of the process they went towards, so I tried to keep things somewhat organized as they were coming in. So I'd say that we probably have like 90% of the components in, but this one was custom made. And I think it's gonna give me an idea of how big this printer is actually gonna be. Classic box within a box. <laughs> 
So I have a manufacturer that can make custom build plates and <laughs> I had this tiny little build plate made. I think this gives a scale of how big this printer is going to be. Or I, I guess I should say how small this printer is going to be. Let's do a couple of quick comparisons on the size. Over here, I have an A1 Mini. We'll go ahead and line that up. <laughs> it is about, what, one sixth of that build plate. We've got the GoTo X1C build plate. Just, uh, just a little bit smaller than that. Upgrade to the H2D build plate. Okay, maybe now I'm starting to see quite a difference. And then in the back of the studio here, the very last one to compare it to, the uh, the Orange Shorn Giga. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's a little bit smaller than that. And the one thing I was thinking about is that it's like perfectly sized for a Benchy. And you know, that was something I was thinking about is that the Benchy is the most classic thing you can 3D print when you first get a 3D printer. And this size build plate is like perfect for just printing a Benchy. But I was thinking, what if I had my own signature little something that I could print on this wherever I went? It would be something small enough that just barely fit on this build plate and maybe only took like 15, 20, 30 minutes to build. And that can just sort of be like the signature of bringing this little tiny 3D printer wherever I go and 3D printing whatever my little custom thing is. You know, you know it just, it's, it's just something to think about. I'm always thinking, you know. But what I really had to start thinking about was the 3D printed parts of this 3D printed 3D printer. And I wanted to add a little bit of my own flair to it. So of course that meant adding my go-to unnecessary blue color all around this 3D printer. So going into all the tiny little details and just adding that pop of color to make it a little bit more fancy. And both due to its size and the number of printers I have here in the studio, I was able to fit it pretty much across my entire print farm and it was gonna be able to print in one go for the most part. And luckily I had enough ABS filament in both the white color and the teal blue so I could get all of the different printers properly loaded up with the colors that they needed for all of those different build plates. And now it was the moment of truth to finally do the 3D printing of this project. Let's go. So I've completed the things that I'm really good at. One, ordering things on the internet. Two, 3D printing things. I'm just not quite as good at following directions and putting things together. And I guess I should say that I'm like pretty certain that I have all the 3D printed parts and all the ordered parts, but we're about to find out. And while I might be a pretty tech focused person, there's one analog thing that I still do that I'm gonna apply to this project. And that's, and that's printing out my boarding pass whenever I go on a flight. I always wanna have that paper version of my boarding pass. So that means. We've got, uh, we've got all the 60 pages of instructions ready to go. And let's see what we're starting out with. We've got the frame assembly. Put a whole bunch of nuts in here, put a whole bunch of more nuts and screw it together. That doesn't seem all that difficult. God, I just know that I'm jinxing myself. <laughs> saying that. Side number one, side number two. Oh, and back. Off to a fantastic start. I didn't really think about what the tolerance and clearance would be with these different parts that I ordered. It's a little tight, but we got the first two of them in. And now we have all of them. One nice thing I'm finding out about the design is that there's all these grooves and notches so that everything slides together perfectly before I start actually screwing it all together. Get these nuts into place. I'm such an idiot. I don't know why I'm doing each individual one by hand when I could do it electronically. I have not used it for a project yet, which is probably why I didn't think of it, but I got this Hodo electric screwdriver kit that has all these different bits. So much better. <laughs> First, uh, first piece complete. <laughs> We've got the, what was this? The frame assembly. We've got the frame assembly put together. It's feeling pretty sturdy. I don't think anything's gonna come apart on it. But we also get another look at how teeny tiny this thing is gonna be. And the next thing that we are going to be working on is, oh God, that looks, 
That looks confusing. Yeah, okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and cue the drive assembly montage. Sorry, drive, I can't even say it right. Drive system assembly montage. And this is where things really started to get real. It was feeling like a super advanced adult Lego set and I was trying to be super careful to follow every little step to make sure I wasn't screwing anything up. Because I just knew that if I messed something up in the beginning and I got way further down the line, I was gonna have to take everything apart and start from scratch. The one really nice thing is that if I ever got a little bit confused from the directions, I could go ahead and hop into that 3D model inside my computer to figure out exactly if I was holding the right piece or if it was going in the right place. At this point, I think I was really feeling myself in the groove and that I was moving along and it was starting to actually kind to look like a 3D printer now. And the drive system assembly is hopefully complete. It has this interesting system. Because it's so tiny, instead of using belts, it uses this metal wire, and that's what the core XY system runs on. One thing I feel like I should do for two reasons, one, to be part of the community, and two, to introduce myself in case I have questions down the road. I am going to post a picture of my build and post it in the Discord community. In the Summer Orange Discord, I'll go ahead and add a few different photos. Hey, everyone. I am working on my own build post. <laughs> Watch they come back like right away and be like, um, you did that wrong already. Fingers crossed that I am following the directions properly. But what do you say? We just get right back into it and build our 3D printed 3D printer. We're making progress, baby. We are making progress. And I think we're at a place where I can actually do a test 3D print. Before I actually put all of this away, I wanna test it out to make sure it's actually printing. One thing I realized that I didn't talk about is that the entire system runs on a power bank. So that means this thing is gonna be able to be completely portable and I'll be able to bring it wherever I want. But look at this mess of cables back here. This, uh, this took me a little bit longer than I would like to admit, but we're here. I've got a roll of PLA filament that I'm going to feed into the extruder. I tested out all of the other motors, but not the extruder one yet. How do I do that though? Oh, extrude. We've got the filament moving through the Bowen tube just as I would expect it to. And we've got filament coming out of the extruder. Love that, love that kind of stuff. Okay, one final check. We've got the extruder heated up. We've got the heat bed heated up. I think I'm ready to go ahead and hit print. Okay, here comes the build plate. I think it's gonna level again one more time. Yep, we're leveling. And now we should hopefully have something printing. Oh my God, the first layer, it's printing. We have a working 3D printed 3D printer. I had no idea that this little fan had LEDs in it. That thing looks awesome. Can I ask for <laughs> anything more than this? Oh my God, we did it. <laughs> was I expecting something better than this? I don't think so. But I was expecting something worse. So I feel like that's a big win. We've got a little bit of banding on the different layers, but nothing too horrible, I would say. And other than that, I mean, the first layer looks pretty decent. 
top layer isn't so great, but not horrible. This is an astounding win for me. But now that I actually have the confidence that this 3D printer can 3D print things, I say we finish up the build and get our 3D printed 3D printer ready for the big leagues. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Introducing the 3D printed 3D printer. It's a new day, I had to take a little bit of a rest because my brain was just going crazy after doing all the final little tweaks to finally get this thing assembled. But uh, what do you think, do you, wanna, do you wanna tour this? It came out so cute. We'll start off with a nice little pan, getting a full look at what this little oven 3D printer looks like. I mean, look at it. <laughs> it literally looks like an oven. It's got nice magnets here, so it easily closes, and then it catches down right there. We've got our tiny little 70 by 70 build plate. It even has a tiny little LCD screen that tells you all the stats of the printer, and we can go ahead and go into a menu, and we can you know, load the filament, we could set the temperatures, load things in from the SD card. Going around to the back of things, he's a little, uh, <laughs> a little bit of a mess back here but we've got a little intake for the filament and we have the power cord that's going to the power bank. So I can unplug this and charge the power bank or I can plug it straight into the printer and have it on. And that truly might be my favorite part about it is that it's fully wireless that no matter where I go, this thing is always gonna be printing because it's completely wireless. Cordless? Is it cordless or wireless? I don't know. Is there a difference? But I do think I figured out what the signature thing that I'm going to print on this printer, the only thing that's gonna be on the SD card that I hit print on, and it's been staring me right in the face this entire time. No, like literally, he's been staring at me this entire time. Why not be the signature thing that I always print, literally just be my face? <laughs> it's done. The magnets are so nice. The very first signature print of the brand new 3D printed 3D printer has finished up. Again, it's not like a Bamboo Lab quality 3D print, but I am perfectly fine with how this is looking. One idea I had because this thing can go absolutely anywhere is designing these tiny little miniature spools because if this is the only thing I'm printing, it's only like five grams of filament. So I'd be able to wrap this up and then have it on the back of the printer. And so that way when I'm on the go, I can just have enough filament to print one of these. And along those lines, I was thinking maybe I could design some sort of like shoulder strap harness that could go on the side that maybe bolts into the top here. That way I can have it as like a little side bag printing on the go. So maybe I'll work on that a little bit and I'll go 3D print in public a little bit more and I'll put that over on my shorts. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. But with that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and print like a uh, hundred thousand more of my little heads and just have them absolutely everywhere. And I will see you at the next Unnecessary Invention. See ya!